How's it going everyone? I'm Contemption and today we're finally expertising CPO Prime. I'm stoked. Uh, we're going to go over the talent tree that I have built for him because I'm going to use him as a primary commander. We're going to go over the gear. We're going to go over how I'm going to swap him around depending on how the enemy reacts. And I think that's the most important thing to take out of a commander is how you compare them in different situations because each KVK enemy you fight out in open field is going to react differently to commanders and we'll go over all of that let's get through the intro and let's expertise this beauty let's go okay so cpo prime i have already leveled him to 60 i had that in a previous video we've done a bunch of wheels i'm pretty much out of gems and i haven't been gem farming as frequently as I would have liked in the last two weeks, so obviously my gem count is quite low. Part of being on a vacation, not gonna be able to do it. I'm not gonna sit at the beach and try and gem farm. I don't even think the Wi-Fi would have reached me there. But anyways, let's get him expertise first. Then I will swap gear around. I'm gonna tell you his um, talent tree, and then I'm gonna go over how I'm gonna pair him. Now that's going to change but I think I know how I'm going to start off with that pair and I think it's gonna work very well, especially with the support tree. So, and we're gonna test it. I'm gonna try and see if I can find somebody to uh, open field fight me, just in Lost, or sorry, in Kingdom Chat, we're not in KVK right now, and just see if someone can fight and then take the reports and just quickly look at them. It won't be anything official. It's not going to be the perfect test, but your perfect test is in KVK and it will change between enemies, it'll change between the alliances you fight in the same kingdom. It just depends on who you're fighting and how they're fighting. Are they fighting zoomed out in what I call arcade mode, or are they fighting on their iPhone, just you know, in normal view like this, picking off icons that they can find, and obviously CPO Prime, Naboo, commanders like that are going to be who they're going after first. But okay, let's go here and let's finish them. I'm stoked. I was thinking about saving these sculptures for an archer commander because they are coming soon and they look fantastic. I think Boudicca Prime is probably going to be my next commander. I was going to do Bacal. I will still do him, but it will be at a slower pace. And I, I get him from Mightiest Governor event. I do get a decent spot every KVK. Well, that worked out pretty cool. So I can get more sculptures that way. So I can work them over time. But eventually I want to finish them because I think he's a fantastic commander. He doesn't have to be primary and we'll go over that as well. Okay, let's keep going up here. It doesn't take too long. Thank you for the guy who showed me. You can just click this fancy button and it's way faster than going in and hitting the plus button. And going through that whole routine. We are way down on sculptures again, but that's okay. So... Yeah, the reason I'm not going to do Archer Commanders right out the gate is because I want people to test them. I'm not a whale. There we go. He's expertised. Let's... Boom. Fantastic. Fiery Rage. Very important skill to have, in my opinion. Uh, when the target is silenced is something we'll talk about. But the reason I didn't do an Archer Commander is, like I said, I'm not a whale. I am a medium spender, depending on the situation, whether we're doing Crystal Tech or... Recharge event, I'll of course do. But I don't get sculptures that quickly. So I will wait for people to test, like Dragothian, Chizjuul, whoever else. I'll wait for them to test and then make a decision. After I've seen the testing and how they're going to work with the commanders that I have, making sure that I have commanders that will pair properly with them, and then I'll make a decision. It'll likely be Boudicca Prime. That's who I'm most likely going to go with. If you didn't already know, you can see them. And here, oh, it doesn't pop up for you. Of course not. It goes to its own web browser. On your iPhone or smart device, you can click that, go under official on the tabs at the top, and then you can see the new commanders, their skills, and their talents, uh, the trees that you get. Boudicca looks pretty sweet. Uh, I'm pretty stoked too. I, I, I'm fairly confident it'll be Boudicca that I work, but we'll go over that in another video. Let's go back to CPO. So, the gear obviously needs to be full defense. Now I'm going to pull gear from people right now that will switch around. I'm going to have to work this and figure out how it's 
Like I'm gonna be pulling things from people right now that just, it's gonna mess everything up. And you know what? Thinking about that, let's quickly, oh, I don't even have this one as empty, so I'm just gonna have to deal with that. This one I do. So I'll just switch like that. So I'm not completely ruining it. And that way I don't have to fix too much when I come back. But okay, we're gonna go with this. I'm gonna go with a lot of the set pieces just to get as much bonuses as possible. Now, for CPO and a lot of my other commanders, I do need to get Eternal Knight Pans, hopefully specialized. Obviously, that would be the goal with a Iconic Crystal. Only makes sense, it's a health buff. It will make it, if you can get it specialized Eternal Knights with that Iconic Crystal, it's better than the Kerouac Pan Specialized. Without a doubt, there, there's no argument against it. We're gonna go with, yeah, I'm gonna go with those boots because I'm not gonna get the four piece set. I'm just gonna go with, honestly, the health. This shield is fantastic. 10.5% health. You can't really beat it, to be honest with you. Even the legendary weapon, unfortunately, I like the iconic attributes are plus three to attack. So it's not really even worth it. It'd be nice to have the March speed from four piece bonus set, but the defense is what I'm going for. Now, this is going to be, I'm gonna to have to craft another Ring of Doom and I'm gonna save material for it. And as soon as we get into Season of Conquest KVK, whether it's Heroic Anthem or whatever mode we're gonna do, definitely has to do another Ring of Doom. Hopefully it's specialized and I will put another Iconic Crystal in it. I think that's very important for accessories. The second one, I honestly don't know. I would like to, if we go in here, I do have the Book of Vengeance, I believe it's called. Where is it here? Yeah, Vengeance. So the Vengeance book, I think that would be decent, but I'm not sure to be totally honest. Leave your input. Maybe the Horn of Fury is the way to go. You really want to get CPO skill casted quickly. So let's do that for right now. Let's put this on so that's likely what i will run i have to do another horn because i don't want to take it away from ramses but that's likely what i'm going to run i think that's good i think once i get the iconic crystals in both the accessories he's going to be a little bit more tanky now how i'm going to run him is cpo prime herald secondary so the reason i'm going to go with herald secondary and we'll test this i'll see if i can get a field fighting going but obviously his four skill where there's a 20% probability that I cast my active skill, I think is very important for CPO being prime. You want to cast your primary skill quickly to get that AOE health debuff off before your other marches cast their primary skill. So before my Naboo casts his skill on the target we're attacking, I want them to have negative 30 health to give them more severely wounded. That's going to help a lot. Now, we're gonna jump around here a little bit. I was thinking of putting CPO behind Guan. I don't want to for a couple reasons. One, I don't wanna lose Leonidas. I don't. He makes Guan a super tank. He gives him more AOE. He gives him more rage. He's an awesome commander. I still really like him. CPO primary just makes sense because you want the enemy health reduced in the AOE. Now, why Herald as a secondary? And just going back, because I'm going back and forth here, but Guan is still gonna be in my march and he's still gonna be casting the silence. So I'm not losing out on his expertise of when the target is silenced, rage grows 30% faster. I'm not losing out on that. I'm still gonna be getting that because the target will be silenced from Guan. Regardless of if he's primary or secondary, it will still happen, I will still get it. And with Leonidas as a secondary, Guan's gonna be casting those skills really fast because he has that rage gain. So I think the combos that I'm working are really going to work well together. I'm looking forward to really seeing how much damage I can do in this next, next KVK with six field fighting marches and decent crystal tech, uh, especially with the new system on how you can get more crystals, but okay. I think I've covered the reasons why I want him as a primary. For Harold being a secondary, it's this probability chance on the support tree for Rejuvenate. We're gonna see if it works. I'm fairly confident it does because Harold's casting his primary skill should work. 
I should get another 150 rage every time Harold casts off his skill, which is fantastic. It also gives CPO some anti swarm because of a wide variety of reasons, uh, whether it's his primary where he does circular AOE damage when he's surrounded, or his expertise where you know counter attack damage is increased exponentially, and it's really going to make him a tank. The alternative to CPO Harold would be CPO Pakal. And I know that sounds odd, putting Pakal as a secondary, but it makes him a tank. And people will regret swarming him after they read the reports. So you will walk away from being swarmed, even if it's first. If you're first swarmed out there, you're still gonna get fantastic trades with Harold or Pakal as a secondary. I think it's gonna work very well, and I'm excited to do it. And a shout out to the players I talked to, Holy Snake and Zero Wolf. I discussed it with them in Alliance Chat quite some time ago when I was thinking about expertise in CPO Prime, and I think it's brilliant. It's going to take some playing around with, of course. Like I said at the beginning of the video, every enemy is going to be different, and you need to adjust. You need to know how the skills work, how the talents work, how the gear works, be able to swap them back and forth quickly depending on how the enemy reacts. You could be fighting on the front lines in hour one and then hour two you're jumping to fight the same kingdom but a different alliance on a different front line and they're going to act completely differently to your commanders. So you really have to know how the skills work. So I'm thinking Harold is a secondary because of his four skill casting his primary there's a 20% chance is really going to help keep CPO casting his skill quickly. And that will reduce the health on the targets you're attacking in a fan-shaped area, which is going to give them more severely wounded, which is going to give you positive trades, which is going to win you the field. That's how it works. You need field control to win KVK. That's just, that's it. Obviously, again, you need rally leaders, you need garrison captains, but that's pretty much where we're at as a kingdom in you know low a mid a kvk ranking you're gonna fight people who have good garrison and rally commanders you're just going to it's a given that they're going to be there so field control is where you're going to win the war and that's what we saw in our last kvk is the field fighting players really stepped up and helped obviously garrison and rallies get their due they did fantastic but Field Control played a huge, huge role in winning that last KVK. And that's where I like to play. So it really works out for me. Okay, let's see if we can queue somebody up for a field fight. We're in day six of Mightiest Governor. I haven't done anything special on this. There's a 5 million point cap. I will not exceed that even if I'm using T5 because the points are pretty low for killing T5 units, 16 points per not going to get more than 20,000 severely wounded, even with 210,000 K in the field. So it should be totally fine. But let's queue somebody up and then I will come back. Shouldn't be an issue. Okay, while we wait for somebody to queue up in Kingdom chat, I'm sure I can find somebody. If not, I don't know, maybe I'll just go try and hit somebody. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, let's take a look at the talent tree because I realized I didn't really zoom out and show you the whole thing. This is 100% the talent tree I'm going to run with. Will it change? It very well could. I don't think it will because I can't get to elite soldiers five out of five without leaving something in support. And I don't want to leave anything in support. Emergency protection, very strong. It's for three seconds, 15% skill damage reduction. There's a 50% chance of that happening when I take skill damage in a murder ball. You're taking skill damage all the time. I don't know if there's a cooldown on this, so emergency protection could be activated quite often. Uh, obviously, rejuvenate, I want that 3 out of 3. I know the rage cap, and I have it written down, is 220. So I'm probably wasting some of this. I, am, I know I'm wasting some of rejuvenate, but if at some point I'm using 120, 130, I think it's worth it. It's a waste in a sense, but sometimes it will really just get you to that skill cast one turn sooner. And that's the whole goal of Murder Balls, is to get to your skill casting as quickly as possible. Okay, let's take a look. So that's the talent tree. I don't think I can change it. Uh, even if I removed everything outside of 
this three, four, five, eight. I can't even max it. Six, I'd only get two in Elite Soldier. So I, I, this has to be the talent tree. Honestly, unless you went for, I can't see that. What is this? Infantry attack, not gonna change it for that. You want the defense or the health. Like it just, that has to be the talent tree if you're using CPO Prime. If you have a different one, let me know. I don't know how else I would do it um, unless you butchered it. But I think with Herald as a secondary, that's what you want. Uh, anything else that I should go over? I don't think so. You want as much defense and health as possible on this commander. Definitely want the Iconic Crystals in there and accessories for that troop base health. Very important. He's going to be a beast in open field. I'm stoked. Um, maybe we should just go over the skills quickly. I might cut this, but we'll go over it anyways. And, and why I'm pairing certain commanders with it. I've already gone over the fact that you want CPO primary to cast that health debuff quickly. So what he does is deals direct damage up to three targets in a forward fan-shaped area. We're going to see what that fan-shaped area looks like in a second. Damage dealt to each target is reduced by 15% for each additional target. That's pretty common. Not for everybody, but for most commanders. Uh, successfully hit targets also suffer 30% reduced health for three seconds. That's awesome. So you're most likely hitting three people each time you're in a murder ball. Um, obviously, sometimes it's not the case, but that's huge. When you're talking all the AOE flying around and for three seconds, man. Uh, increase infantry units attack by 40%, which is awesome, and their march speed by 15%, which is important, and they get a 10% increased march speed outside of Alliance territory, which is really, you're fighting there quite often, and when you're not, you're getting the march speed bonus from being on Alliance territory. So, it's, a, it's a definitely a positive. Uh, increases infantry health units by 20% when attacking troops, which is anytime CPO is out in the field, and grants each attack a 10% chance, and I love this, of dealing continuous additional damage for 3 seconds. Man, this effect triggers once every 8 seconds. Him with Herald as a secondary is just going to be casting so much damage. I am stoked. Like, that's 1,500 damage factor over those three seconds. Not including all the extra buffs that I might be getting from Talents and from the Ring of Doom. Man, so good. Uh, when troops on the map take skill damage, there's a 50% chance of reducing that damage by 30% and forming a shield that covers up to three allied troops for three seconds. It's like having another Alex on the field. It's awesome. Damage factor 500. This effect triggers once every eight seconds. Long cooldown. Another thing I have to kind of figure out is how... I'm going to put Alex back in open field because I definitely need him out there. So I've got to figure that out. How I'm going to pair that, I don't know yet. I'm going to figure that out. I'm still contemplating how that's going to work. Uh, new skill. And this skill is fantastic. This is why um, he doesn't have to be paired with Guan because Guan's still going to put that silence on there. But let's read it from the beginning. Increases skill damage dealt by 10%. When the target is silenced, rage grows 30% faster. So every time Guan casts his primary skill, which will be quickly because he's got the skill tree and he's got Leo with that beautiful 15% speed of rage gained right there. Um, so every time he casts it for three seconds, they're going to be silenced. So yeah, CPO's still going to be getting that 30% increased rage, which is phenomenal. Okay, let's check Kingdom Chat. Okay, we found somebody to duel. I teleported closer because I didn't feel like walking the 58 kilometers to him. Even though it would have been probably fast, but oh well. 100 KT5, that's what we're going with. That's what I have here right now. Remember that I am France. I think it is probably the best civilization. I can't find an argument against it for an infantry-focused player like myself. Especially being a field fighting player. Hospital healing speed. Increased troop health by 3%. That's not just on infantry, that's on archers as well, which I run. Let's see what DD is running here. I'm going to scout him. See what he's got. I believe he's using YSG as a secondary behind CPO. His CPO is not done. So it's 5541. So I'm obviously going to win? Maybe? I don't know. We'll see. Let's see what happens. At least we'll get to see a report. This means. Literally nothing about testing. I just want to see how Rejuvenate works. Let's let's hit him. Let's see what happens. Got to hit me back. That gives you the War Frenzy. If you don't hit them back, it doesn't cause War Frenzy. 
So I've already got Harold's skill, his four skill, the probability casting, which means we should see rejuvenate quite early in the report. Uh, I'm not getting the extra rage gain because I don't have Juan out in the field causing the silence. But you know what? That's okay. It's just a 1v1. Doesn't mean much. He's actually doing a lot of damage. Considering that his CPO is not even expertised, he's not doing bad. That's, again, YSG is a very, very strong commander, especially behind somebody who's doing massive skill damage like CPO Prime is because of YSG's 4 skill, giving 50% increased skill damage. Very strong. I like this. This is good. He, what, what civilization is he? France, he's France as well. Again, it's a fantastic civilization to have as a field fighter. I am looking forward to going over the report and he's doing fantastic. Like CPO does not need to be expertise. Just based on this. Wow. That's crazy. I like, I like YSG behind him. It's going to be a huge target, but and it doesn't have that kind of counter attack as much as Harold or Bacall will have, which is why I'm using CPO Harold. I'm a little bummed I'm missing out on Alex Harold, but once I finish Bacall, I can always switch that around. It won't be for this KVK, so I really got to figure that out. But besides that, I think CPO Harold is going to be very fun and open field, and I'm looking forward to the reports. We'll switch it around as needed, um, and we'll see how this looks. But let's finish it off. Unless he runs, I don't think he will. We all pretty much just like to wait till the report or till the marches are completely dead. And that way you can see the full report, everything from top to bottom, and just seeing kind of where things fall apart. 24,000 left. He did really well. Report wise, honestly, not bad. Considering CPO, he's got the relic, which is very nice, although it doesn't count on archers, but he's getting extra 3% skill damage. Which isn't huge, but it does add up. Um, he did good. Very good. Okay, I'm just going to thank him first off. Uh, rejoin the Alliance, because I don't want to miss out on any gold chests, obviously. Let's go over the report. Just wanted to thank Death Deal, obviously, for just randomly fighting me. Very much appreciated. It's Friday at 11 o'clock on our slow time, so the fact that I found somebody is fantastic. Okay, so let's take a look at the battle log. We've seen the troop buffs. We know what we've got. He's got a good amount of defense, a uh, decent amount of infantry attack, and infantry health. I wonder what gear he's running. I'm just going to ask him for a screenshot of that. So, I'm doing a lot of editing here, so I apologize if it sounds a little sketchy, but um, here's the gear I was using, just as a reference, and then we're going to take a look at DD's gear of what he's using. Okay. So here's the gear Death Deal was using. Uh, looks like he has the Iconic Crystal in the boots, the Hope Cloak, and the Helm. He's really going all out on the infantry gear, which is awesome. It's, it's good gear. The only thing he's missing is legendary accessories. I'm definitely over the epic accessories, just based on what you can get from legendary accessories and the Iconic Crystal on that base health. It's just, I'm, I'm just over it. I want legendary gear all the way, including accessories and mostly accessories. But this is good. I haven't seen those gloves very often. They're totally good. They're 8% defense. Um, I think they're sacred grips. I think that's what it's called. Really good. But I don't see it very often. So it's cool to see. But the gear is not too bad. So it must have just been the fact that I'm using Herald. No rune, just a 5% defense token. Oh, nice. Okay, so let's go to the rapport of the battle log quickly. And we've seen what gear he's using, what gear I'm using, the troop buffs. It's a little, I'd have to add it all up. It must just be because I have Harold as a secondary, which gives more infantry buffs. But anyways, not important. Let's go to battle log. So, was that our side? Did we cast his skill? Wow. Let's see here. It would be further down, I believe. Harold cast Berserker. Wow. On the second turn. That's crazy. So did I get the... I got the Rejuvenate Rage. Holy moly. Holy moly, man. Okay, so Harold as a secondary behind CPO is going to be very strong. Again, to get that... 
30% decrease in health, AOE, casted quickly before Naboo casts his skill, before Guan casts his skill. Man, that's going to hurt. Wow. And he got this too at the same time. Command uses the active skill, all infantry units. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because of doing a, a skill there. Okay. Well, guys, that is fantastic. Very cool. I am. Um, I'm stoked. Honestly, this is big, especially with having the Horn of Fury on there too. When is the first? I'm gonna collapse this again. So we got our first skill cycle. Wow. So we got it on turn two, which is awesome. That's where Harold really shines as well, as well with Alex. That's why they're such a good combo. Um, but I think buying Sepio, it's actually even better. Um, Ring of Doom. Oh my goodness. So we had, and it cast here the Ring of Doom, right? Because it says one, no, no, it cast it here. So it did take effect, but holy smokes. So on turn eight, we got it. And then on turn 12, we got it as well. And that's obviously from Harold just casting Berserker again. With Rejuvenate, man, that's so cool. I'm so stoked to use CPO Prime in open field fighting with Harold as a secondary. I don't think it can go wrong. I think it's going to be so dope. Oh man, I'm glad I got to test it. I don't think there's too much more I needed to see. That's really what I was mostly curious about was just making sure that Rejuvenated works. I do not think it should be any lower than 3 out of 3. Like honestly, it just shouldn't. It's, I know it's 150 rage, but on, on turn two, you're not getting enough rage from other things anyway, so that's probably all being used to the 220 rage cap. So that's huge. Like, that's why I casted that skill so quickly. Turn eight. Turn eight. That's awesome. Who is this? Ashen Tempest. We got scouted by a couple people because we obviously were in Kingdom chat. Shout out to those guys. Um, that's awesome. Turn two, then turn eight. Man, that's gonna work really good. I like the gear. I'm gonna have to do another Ring of Doom and another Horn of Fury to make sure that this guy casts as fast as possible. Very cool. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was long, quite a bit of editing in it just because of how things are separated in the video. But uh, I appreciate it, guys. Thank you for checking out the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I will definitely be doing more commanders in the future, probably the archer commanders once I have enough legendary sculptures saved up and hopefully enough gems from the for the wheel. But let's see what other people find first before we spend our sculptures because it takes me a lot longer to collect sculptures than it does a whale who spends much more money in the game than I do because I am not a big spender, that's for sure. But anyways guys, have a good night, have a good weekend. Or if you're watching this and it's during the week because it's later on, have a good week. Later. Bye.